While I knew China would never cease to surprise me, I didn't expect to completely rediscover it. I've been going to China to explore, conduct research, and work for nearly 20 years, almost always passing through Beijing for a couple of days here and there. During my time in China, I became increasingly involved in the world of heritage conservation, working with historic buildings and places to protect them for future generations. Since preservation doesn't take place in a vacuum, I decided that I needed to understand better the living context. Why do some historic neighborhoods in Chinese cities still endure and even thrive? During my Bourne Fellowship, I planned to do documentation, surveys, and interviews. And I have to admit, I thought I knew so much about China and about my research topic that I would simply go and collect my data and head home ready to write my dissertation. However, my time there opened my eyes to the reality of life in the city. Despite the past century having taken its toll on urban China's character, there are quite a bit of traditional patterns and places left. I spent my time exploring the traditional hutong or alleyways of Beijing and working on my Mandarin with a private tutor in new and old traditional style courtyard houses converted into cafes, restaurants, lounges, and even my home. What was most challenging and impactful was discovering the realities of these neighborhoods. On the one hand, these areas are hotbeds of commercial activity, the setting of roaming street vendors, bustling night markets, and stores of all sorts. On the other, they are the site of sometimes squalid public housing for low-income families, many of which are charming traditional buildings on the outside, but rows of dark, minuscule apartments on the inside. Resident after resident expresses attachment to the community, but despises the living conditions. They are eager to see these classic buildings replaced by modern high-rises. All of this challenged my own concept of the beauty and historic value of these places, setting it squarely in conflict with the harsh realities of life. The Boren Fellowship was invaluable to my research, but even more importantly, it upended my own understanding of the politics of preservation and of China itself. Now, I'm left struggling with the realities of these places, trying to reconcile the historic values of the neighborhoods with their social and economic realities.